Good morning, family. So who of you did what job will ask this week? Who invited people to church today? Come put up your hands. Who invited people today? You sowed a seed for a harvest to come, Gerda. <laughs> Don't ever stop asking. Don't ever stop inviting people. Let's pray quickly. Jabba, thank you for that word. Lord, I thank you as we can become quiet before you today, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask that you will come and move among your people this morning, Lord, and that you will touch us deeply, Lord. That we will hear your voice. That we will heed to it, Lord. And we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, as I come and I yield myself before you. That your power may, may flow through me, Lord, to your people this morning. We give you all the honor all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Nick, is this thing too close? Making a little bit of So this morning, my message was Jesus. Jesus is half by door. Okay, it's supposed to say Jesus our city of refuge. Now we're going to repeat this every Sunday. That the Bible is from the beginning right to the end about Jesus. We cannot just read the Old Testament and we cannot just read the New Testament. Because the whole of the Bible is God's love letter to us about one person, and that is Jesus. And it's become our mission as leaders to preach and teach the Word of God in such a way that you can fall in love with the Word of God. Because when you fall in love with the Word of God, you fall in love with Jesus. Your life starts having purpose. It has meaning. And the best of all is that the storms in your life, it loses its strength. Because when you fall in love with Jesus, you realize that he becomes your refuge. Many of us, and I think if I had to ask you to put your hand up, is going through difficult times. Many of us. It brings challenges. It brings disappointments. And if we don't know where to go, it can leave us in despair. Sometimes we feel so overwhelmed. So overwhelmed by what's going on because without admitting it to yourself, you realize that you've got no control over what's happening to you. And you realize in the back of your head that you are at God's mercy. And believe it or not, as rough as it feels, that's the best place to be. The best place to be to realize that He alone can be your refuge. Psalm 46 in the Living Bible. It says, God is our refuge and our strength, a tested help in times of trouble. 2 Samuel 22, and it gets repeated in Psalm 18 for those who want to write that down. As for God, he is a shield to all those who trust and take refuge in him. 
If you look at that last bit, for those who trust and take refuge in him, for those who take the time to run to Jesus and those who dare to take an action and take refuge in him. We need to realize that God has given his only son to us. His son to be a refuge for us. He's given us his son and the word of God says he's got the name above all names. That every time you say Jesus, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. And we need to realize that this world cannot give us any relief or shelter against the storms. For one reason, the world and its storms is one. They are one. It's the world coming at you. But when we turn to Jesus, Jesus on the other hand stands above it all. Above it all. <clears throat> Ephesians 1.21 In the easy read version, it says God, he put Christ over all rulers, authorities, powers and kings. God gave him authority over everything that is power in this world or in the next. The world cannot give you what you need. I'm going to give you a lot of verses and not all of them are on the overheads this morning, so be fast to write down. One of them is in Psalm 145 verse 16. It says, Thou open thine hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. Nobody else can do that. God is the only one that we can run to because God has given Jesus the power over everything that has power in this world. And God loved us so much that he sent his son to the cross so that he could be a refuge for us in our times of trouble, in our times of pain and disappointment. Jesus is our safe place that we can go to. And we need to start reading the word and fall in love with it because there, only then will you understand that everything that is in Jesus, everything, God has provided everything in him and through him that we will need. God has written this love story in his word. But everything is given us. He started preparing in the Old Testament. We cannot separate the two. Our Bible scholars know. We always say the Old Testament, in the Old Testament is hidden the New Testament. And the New Testament reveals the Old Testament. If you start studying, you come across the word typology. Typology means the picture language of the Old Testament. In other words, every story, every person, everything that has been told in the Old Testament is a picture of what is to come. Then they go further and they call those pictures shadows or types. If you look at a shadow, it is not the real thing. I spoke to my second years about it this week. A shadow cannot stand on its own. It needs something. But also if you look at a, sh a shadow, it is not perfect. It's not the perfect outline of the real thing. So it becomes an imperfect representation of the real thing. So if we look at the Old Testament, the Old Testament is the imperfect representation of the perfect to come. The Word of God tells us in Hebrews 8, it says that Jesus came to establish a better covenant with better promises. He brought the perfect. And this is why we can't separate the Old Testament from the New Testament. 
So if I'm saying to you that Jesus is our refuge, that means him being a refuge should have been revealed in the Old Testament already by God. There should be a shadow. If we read in the Old Testament, we come across the cities that was placed there, that every person that committed a crime killed somebody, and it was an innocent murder, they were able to run to these cities for safety. And these cities were called cities of refuge. If you look deeper, these cities were placed in such a way in Israel that a person could get there quickly. Well, to them in those days, it was, it says, they could get there in one day. <laughs> to us, it sounds like forever because we are spoiled having a car. But these cities were placed in such a way that any person that needed safety could run there. It also states that the roads that led to these cities were always kept clean and neat. All obstacles were removed. It was wide. They talk about, I think, 62 foot or 48 foot. I can't remember what I read up. But it was kept in peak condition. Obstacles removed. No river was allowed to cross it because it would slow down the person's speed to get to the city. Interesting, isn't it? And that is a shadow of what Jesus would become to us one day in the New Testament, our city of refuge. So I want us to go open your Bibles at Numbers 35. This is the very first time when we read about it. And it says, the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to start at verse 1 and you'll see I'm jumping around to a few verses. So if you just um, follow on the overheads. So verse number one says, the Lord said to Moses, instruct the people of Israel. And verse six, it says, give the Levites the six cities of refuge, where a person who was accidentally killed, uh, who has accidentally killed someone can run and be safe. The cities of refuge shall be the designated, uh, Sorry, the cities of re refuge shall be designated for anyone to flee into if he has killed someone accidentally. These cities will be places of protection from the dead man's relatives who want to avenge his death. For the slayer, the guy that killed, must not be killed unless a fair trial establishes his guilt. These are not only for the protection of the Israelites, but also for the foreigners and the travelers. The killer shall be permitted to stay in the city of refuge, and he must live there until the death of the high priest. Who were the cities given to? The Levites. Who were the Levites? The high priests. Who is our high priest today? Jesus. Jesus Christ. So already we can see the shadow. Then it says, the killer shall be permitted to stay in the city of refuge, and he must live there until the death of the high priest. Only the death of the high priest would be able to acquit him from the sin that he has committed. After that, he was allowed, he was set free, and he could leave and he could go back to his hometown, free of sin. But now we see the shadow is imperfect. Because this person, according to the Israelite um, um, law, it was an eye for an eye, right? You killed somebody, you were killed. But if you, by accident, killed somebody, you were allowed into the city, and then the elders had to prove you guilty or not. They had to say if they agree with you that you are not guilty. So only the innocent was allowed in this city, in perfect shadow. Because along comes the perfect Jesus, our high priest, that died for our sins, delivered us, set us free. But the perfect 
is the fact that the guilty and the unguilty could come to him. And the thing was, you had to stay in the city. Keep that in mind. You had to stay in that city of refuge. It was the only place that could give you the safety you needed. The second time we read about this is in Joshua 20. Now, in verse 1 it says, And the Lord said to Joshua, Tell the people of Israel to designate now the cities of refuge, as I instructed Moses. So God instructed Moses what these cities had to look like. And when Joshua came, God said, Now you institute this. So this is the very first time you can go read in Joshua 20. It goes through exactly the same that is in Numbers 35, except it adds. This is the first time where they reveal the names of the cities of refuge. And hidden in those names, we find the love of God. We find the characteristics of Jesus as you know, every Hebrew name has got a meaning. And every name of the city is a characteristic of who Jesus becomes to us when we run to him for refuge. And the best is if you take the six cities and you take the meaning of their names, you put it as a whole, it becomes so clear the full sufficiency of who Jesus is for us. When we choose him as our city of refuge and when we choose to stay with him. So when we look at the names, it reveals God's intent when he gave, made Jesus our refuge. And the very first name, and we're going to look in this, at these names in detail, the first one is Kadesh, and it means holy place or righteousness. That makes Jesus the refuge of the unclean and the unholy, our sanctuary. Jesus became sin for us on our behalf. He became our redeemer so that he can become our holy sanctuary. What is a sanctuary? It's a place of rest. It's a place where we don't need to wait until we're perfect, until we come to Jesus. Where, when we looked at the shadow, the imperfect shadow in the Old Testament, you had to be um, innocent. So when Jesus came, he took away our past, he gave us his holiness, his righteousness. In Hebrews 8.12 it says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Jesus is the only person that we can go to that will never judge you. In the Old Testament that person was sat down in front of elders. And he had to prove that he was innocent. Jesus is the only one that asks no questions. Only the one that is clean can make us clean and can make us holy. The second city, the name is Shechem. It means shoulder, a place of strength and safety that makes Jesus a refuge for the weary. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, we know so well where Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and is heavy laden. 2 Samuel twenty two thirty three. 33. It says, God is my strength and my power. It is him that makes my way perfect. We need to remember... With God being our shoulder and our place of strength. Just like he went out to fetch that one, one sheep. And he carried that sheep back on his shoulder. Daddy will do for me and you. Maybe you've never taken refuge in Jesus. Maybe you have, but you've decided to step outside the city. No questions asked. He will carry you. 
on his shoulder. We were not created to carry our own burdens on our own. Jesus was given to us. He's Joker's light. We were created to give it to the one when we co- that can carry it when we feel we can't. Psalm 28, 8 says, The Lord is my strength. He is my saving strength. He is the saving strength of his anointed. The world can't. The third city, Hebron. It means fellowship or relationship. So that makes Jesus a refuge for the lonely and those who feel unloved. Our sin separated us from God, our Father. Jesus came and he bridged that gap. And because of that, nothing, nothing can keep us from having a true and a deep relationship with God, except by choice. Jesus is the one that cleaned up the roads to the city of refuge. He is the one that bridged the gap, that made sure that there's no rivers, there's no debris on those roads. The road is open. Ephesians 2.13 says, Now, You who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. That hunger and emptiness that chases us day in, day out. I'm going to say it again. Nobody can satisfy it. Jesus is the only one that can satisfy. Until you turn to Jesus... You will never be satisfied. Your spirit, that hunger, that lack, that emptiness that you are feeling was created for only one person and Jesus to fill it. Nothing can fulfill like Jesus. He fulfills every empty void, addiction, disappointment and lack. The fourth city, Beza. The meaning is, it's a stronghold, a fortress, or a rock. We were singing about it just now, standing on the rock. So that makes Jesus the refuge for the helpless. A fortress or a stronghold is a defensive structure that could not be penetrated by the enemy. It kept everything and everybody safe. They took refuge in it. Now, when you read in the Old Testament, we always think of a stronghold or like a small little hiding place. But if you read in the Old Testament, it was so big that they even put their livestock and all their possessions in that, in in the stronghold. Only Jesus is big enough to protect you from everything. When we find refuge in him, nothing can touch us. Psalm 27, verse 1 and 5. It says, The Lord is the refuge and fortress of my life. Whom shall I dread? For he will hide me in the shelter, in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will conceal me. Conceal means to, to hide or to be kept secret. The enemy will pass you by when you take refuge in Jesus. And then not even to mention, he's got the name above all names. The word of God tells us that his name is a strong tower. And when the righteous runs into it, we are safe. Just his name, just his name. But we have to make the choice to stay in the city, right? We're going to talk about it just now. 
The first city, Ramoth. It means exalted or heights. And this makes Jesus the refuge for the inconsolable or the gutted sinner. We get knocked down to levels so low that we think we cannot get up. Jesus is the only one that can lift us. The only one. Psalm 34, 18 and 19, it says, The Lord is close to those who are of a broken heart, and save such as are crushed with sorrow. Many evils confront the consistently righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Psalm 3, verse 3, But Lord, you alone can lift my head that is now bowed in shame. Psalm 27, 5. He will lift me high upon a rock. That means God will lift me high upon Jesus. The word rock means in the sense of higher than anything else. If you look at wild animals, they sleep on top of lions, on top of a rock. It's above their enemies. The word of God tells us God will place you on a rock, high above your enemies. Psalm 27, 6 says, And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies that is all around me. When we turn to Jesus as our refuge, he elevates us above our storms, above our situations, and above our enemies. And yes, it hurts. Yes, it's difficult. But they can't touch us. God will take you and place you on a rock. And that brings us to the last one. Number six, that is Golan. Joy and exaltation. It makes Jesus a refuge for those who have lost all hope in the valley of death and despair. Psalm 46. I want to read this to you, verse 4 and 5. It says, There is a river of joy flowing through the city of our God. The sacred home of the God above all gods. There's a river of joy flowing through God's city, which is us. In spite of our situation, that river of joy is God's life-giving presence. It says, flowing through the city of our God, us, the sacred home of the God above all gods. God himself is living in that city. He's living in us. And it says, therefore, in other words, for that reason, I stand unmoved despite the turmoil that is around me everywhere. He will not delay his help. He cannot delay his help when he's inside of us. The minute we make Jesus our refuge, he is inside of us. And that's where that river starts flowing. Those days where the world tells you, you should be broken. You should not be standing here. But the river is flowing because Jesus is my refuge. If we put together all six of that, Kadesh, when Jesus is for us a Kadesh, he's our holy sanctuary where we can find rest for the holy and the unholy. He becomes our Shechem, which is a place where we find strength. He becomes our Hebron that offers us a relationship, a fellowship, love that nobody else can give us. Then he becomes our Biza, our stronghold our um, fortress and rock 
where the enemy can't touch us. And because we're standing on the rock, we bec he becomes Ramoth to us. He lifts us above our situation, above everything that is going on around us. And that's where the last Golan comes in, where our refuge, Jesus, our refuge, becomes our joy. Joy in the middle of our situation. So can you see that God has given us a city of refuge that gives us everything that we need. Why do we run to the world? But I'm not done with Numbers 35. Go back there. There's a stern warning. Remember I spoke about staying in the city. There's a warning against seeking refuge in anything else but God. So it says, if the slayer leaves the city, the person that committed the murder. And the avenger of blood finds him outside and kills him. You know that family member that came after him? If he catches the man slayer and he kills him, the Bible says it will not be seen as murder. Okay? For the man should have stayed inside the city until the death of the high priest. Your protection is under your high priest. It says, but after the death of the high priest, this man may return to his own land and home. And here we go again, just like when we learned about communion. These are permanent laws for all Israel, which is us from generation to generation. See, sometimes we do run to God. We do run to Jesus as our refuge. But then things become tough. And we decide to step outside the city. There's a story of a man that ran to such a city in the Bible. I think his name's Abner. I read it up the other day. It's a sermon on its own. And he agreed to meet somebody outside the city. And you know what? He stepped outside and he was stabbed. David called him a fool. We want to step outside the city sometimes and do our own thing. Like, wait, Jesus, I've got this. I know how to fix this. You step outside the city and you are exposed to anything and anyone that comes after you. You know, the Bible is so deep that that shadow of the city that gives you protection does not stop there with Jesus. Do you know that that, that shadow of those that are found outside the city goes as far as when Jesus comes back? When Jesus comes back the second time, he comes back as the avenger of blood. And if you are found outside his righteousness, you are not going to heaven. Can you see how many meanings and shadows there are in the word of, of God and how interesting it is? It's not just words on paper. Not one word is placed on that paper just to fall a void, just to fall, make the Bible full. But it doesn't stop there. When we rely on ourselves, we will bring a curse upon ourselves, God warns us. Jeremiah 17, 5 to 6. When you step outside the city, this is what God has got to say. He says, thus says the Lord, Curse is the man who trusts in and relies on mankind, making weak, faulty human flesh his strength, and whose mind and heart turns away from the Lord. When you rely on yourself, when you rely on human flesh to be your answer, you are turning your back on God. Continues to say, for he will be like a shrub in a parched desert and shall not see the prosperity when it comes. You will miss God's blessings. You will be blinded. So he will be like a shrub in a parched desert and shall not see prosperity when it comes, but shall live 
in the rocky places, shallow roots of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land, you rely on your flesh, you are standing like that one little tree alone in the desert, naked and exposed to the enemy and all the elements. Jesus should always be our go-to. Because it continues in Jeremiah 17, the seventh verse. And this is the beauty of who Jesus is. It says, blessed with spiritual security is the man who believes and trusts in and relies on the Lord and whose hope, you can replace that with refuge everywhere, the meaning, other meaning of hope is refuge. So blessed with spiritual security is the man who believes and trusts in and relies on the Lord and whose refuge and confident expectation is the Lord. For he will be nourished like a tree planted by waters that spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear the heat when it comes, but its leaves will be green and moist and it will not be anxious and um, concerned in the year of drought nor stop bearing fruit. Did you know that when a tree senses drought, it will not bear fruit. Secondly, it stops feeding the leaves. And the result is it drops its leaves to, to save the plant. When Jesus is our shelter, it says you will be planted by waters. You will have the confidence to spread out your roots to that river. It says that you will not fear when he comes because you know you are in your fortress. You are protected by Jesus. Your leaves will be green and moist. In other words, you will just flourish. In the middle of a storm, nothing can touch you. Nobody says it's going to be easy. But the more you rely on him, the more you trust in him, the more you, you use Jesus or allow him to be your refuge, the more you can carry on with all the blessings pouring in and allow him to do what he does best. When we find refuge in Jesus, we will not be anxious or concerned in a year of drought, nor stop bearing fruit. Because he is our city of refuge, the all-sufficient one. So as I told you, the facts were the roads were kept in good condition. Obstacles were removed. No rivers were allowed to cross those roads. So it did not um, slow down the person. The other thing was, on every bend of that road, it said they would put a post that says refuge that way. And then it also describes that once that person is found um, not guilty, he would be settled in, in a nice comfort place, and he will be trained up in a skill so when he leaves the city, he could sustain himself. So as I said just now, along came Jesus, cleaned up the roads, removed all obstacles, made sure there's no river to stop you. And this morning you're at the bend where the sign says refuge that way. When we choose him as our refuge, we get trained up in a skill. We become a disciple. He lives within us and the river flows outside so that we can become refuges to other people. <coughs> Ask yourself this morning. You know, between me and Pastor Chris, we were tested till the last minute today. Is God your refuge? The first test is, 
we start with city number six. Do you have joy flowing through you in spite of what you are going through? Because he's standing here this morning offering you everything you ever wanted. Everything that spirit that he created as creator needs to be who he created you to be. Ask yourself, how much are you relying on self and how much are you allowing him to do? This world is empty. Many of us are running from A to B to C to D until we get to Z and we start with A again because we feel empty and unsatisfied. If you're hungry and you eat stones and grass, you're still going to be hungry. To satisfy your hunger, you've got to eat food, the real thing. eat the wrong thing it's going to cause pain right because you expose your body to stuff that it was not created for don't get caught outside the city there's a stern warning this morning God standing with his arms open wide as your city of refuge the one that's got everything inside that city that you need and when you step in there, you are declared innocent, whether you're guilty or not. He takes it all away, your past, all your pain. He carries it. Not yours. You were not made to be your own. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you. Thank you that your love for us is so great, Lord. That you have given us your son as a refuge, Lord. So that whatever we need, Lord, is available this morning, Lord. 24-7 till eternity. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you touch every heart this morning as we sit here and we examine ourselves, Lord. As we stand naked before you, Lord. Expose in us, Lord, what is not of you, Lord. What needs to go so that you can come in, Lord. Thank you for your word, Lord. Forgive us for neglecting it so many times. Because by neglecting your word, Lord, we are neglecting you and we, your blessings pass us by because we don't even recognize them. Help us to make you our refuge, Lord, the all-sufficient one. With the name above all names, the tower that we can run into that keeps us safe. We give you praise, Lord. We give you honor. Your word says you are all in all, Lord. All in all. Nothing lacking. I want to ask if there's any of you this morning that has never found refuge. Even if you've drifted away. Jesus is calling you back. Back into his city of refuge. And if you've never been there, 
come so that we can pray with you this morning and help you to meet Jesus that wants to give you everything, everything that is locked up inside of him. All we have to do is say yes. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the real thing, the perfect, Lord. The perfect Jesus. The perfect love. Thank you that we can be complete in him who is head of all principalities and powers. The one who has authority over everything that has power in this world. We praise you, Lord. I pray your anointing, Lord, and your blood over every person sitting here this morning. I thank you, Lord, that you will keep them safe. Holy Spirit, that your that you will work in their hearts and that that word will not return unto them void. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and we give you all the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, family. Thank you.